Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mindful Homestead. My name is Jack and hopefully I'm not going to upset too many of you today because we're taking on a little bit of a controversial topic. On today's video we're going to talk about guns, specifically the type of firearms you should or the, the kinds of firearms that I believe play mostly into homestead living. Uh, whether you live way out in the country, you live in the suburbs, um, these are things that necessarily, uh, they, they play a role in your day-to-day -day operations. Not necessarily day-to-day, -day, but they could have a role in your day-to-day. -day. The general outline of the video I wanna cover is why you might want firearms on your homestead, what those firearms would be, and how they should be set up for homestead work. I'm looking at firearms here as tools, not toys or playthings. I mean, obviously a firearm is always a tool, it should always be respected, but target shooting, recreation, shooting sports, things like that, um, you're gonna set up your firearms a little bit differently than if they're going to work for you on your homestead. Before we get too into it, I do wanna thank Olight for sponsoring this video. They are a maker of both flashlights and weapon mounted lights, and they've been doing it for a while. Uh, I've had a few of their products over the years that I've purchased on my own, including one light, which we'll see later here on one of my rifles. Uh, they did send out a light and laser combo for one of our handguns, uh, which I do believe is actually a great thing to have on a homesteading pistol. We'll talk a little bit more about that light specifically when we get to the pistol side of things. One other thing I wanna mention before we get into the video is that all of the firearms you're gonna see today have been cleared by me personally. There's no magazines, there's no ammunition, nothing in the immediate area that they could be loaded with. There's no way for these firearms to become loaded unless I was to leave the area and somebody else came in and loaded them. Uh, I doubt that's gonna be happening on my own property here. So just be aware, even though firearms can be fun to shoot recreationally, uh, they are tools, they need to be treated with respect. Uh, they can be dangerous if you're not careful. And uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew I was taking the proper precautions here. So when it comes to firearms on a homestead, there's three main reasons that jump out immediately why you might want to have or own a firearm uh, on your homestead, regardless of size. The first one for me is arguably the biggest, and that is predator and varmint control of the animals that you're raising on your homestead. Whether it's chickens in your backyard, pigs, cows out west where you have to worry about wolves and things like that. Um, a firearm gives you an advantage. You're not gonna go out and, and fight a wolf with a knife or a club. Um, a firearm gives you the ability to protect your livestock from these animals at a distance without having to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with something like a coyote. On our property, we've had a couple of instances where uh, black bears, right in the spring when they're hungry, uh, young males specifically have come out and they've kind of bothered our piglets in the spring. We've also had incidents with coyotes, possums, raccoons, all sorts of other animals trying to get our chickens and smaller livestock. So right off the bat, you know, obviously you want to check the laws in your own state, wherever you're homesteading, but right off the bat, a firearm gives you the ability to protect your livestock and protect the, the things you're growing on your homestead. Secondly, and this is arguably where firearms come into play the most for us, is uh, humane slaughter of an animal. There have been multiple instances over the last couple years where we have had to slaughter pigs ourselves versus putting them on a trailer and bringing them to a slaughterhouse or a butcher. Uh, it just hasn't worked out that way. Either an animal has gotten sick or it just wouldn't load on the trailer and it was up to me personally to dispatch that animal and take care of it. A firearm is the most effective way for a homestead scale farmer to do that sort of thing without going into specialized equipment like a captive bolt gun. Now I'm not gonna get into the specifics of humane slaughter on the farm, what calibers are best. That is really something I would encourage you to research on your own. Uh, there are people that will say something as small as a little 22 pistol would work for something like that. It can get the job done, but it's not the best tool for the job. And that's all I'm really gonna say on that. But those are decisions that you have to make on your own, and I'm not going to call anybody out for what they use. I'm just going to talk about what I do. So humane slaughter, reason number two. Reason number three you might want a firearm on your homestead is you may want to procure meat that is not raised by you. You might want to go hunting. You might want to deer hunt. Bow hunting is a really, really cool pastime as well. I participate in that. But if you want to talk about the most 
effective way for many people to get into hunting and get in getting into procuring their own meat from the land uh, a firearm definitely gives them the 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 biggest entry into it the you know the kind of biggest advantage if you will there is a fourth reason that a lot of people talk about and being that i'm going to shy away from the political side of things in this video i'm not going to talk about it too much but there is the protection of your family and property we live in a very rural area i don't necessarily have to worry about people coming up my driveway and wishing to do my family harm um, but it is the thought that's in the back of your head and if that is something you're thinking about obviously a firearm can play into that as well but from a homesteading standpoint uh, we're not necessarily going to talk too much about that today just because the, the family and property protection side of things extends beyond homesteading and that's its own whole other animal to tackle there's three main types of firearms that roughly make up probably 99 percent of the firearms that you're going to see uh, owned by civilians and, and useful for homesteading operations. Those three main types that you're going to see most often are pistols, rifles, and shotguns. Each of these types of firearms has its advantages and disadvantages, but they all have a place on the homestead. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy everything you see here. Um, you can get away, honestly, with probably even just one of the items that you see here if it's set up correctly which we'll talk about but by and large for ho most homesteads you know pick two pick one rifle one pistol one shotgun one pistol one shotgun and rifle if you buy two firearms and they come from two of those different categories you're going to be able to set them up in a way that can do 99.9 percent .9 of everything you would need on your small farmer homestead modern ammunition has so many different loads out there so many different options as far as bullet type, shell type for shotguns, uh, different powder charges, different and you know loading specifications. You know, they're making shot shells now for pistols and rifles, similar to what you would have seen as shotguns back in the day. They're making slug projectiles that you can be fired out of shotguns that are borderline as accurate as rifles out to 100, 200 yards. At this point, it's almost more dependent on the ammunition that you choose than the actual firearm itself. Really briefly, I'm going to go over some of the firearms that you see here, what they are, and how I have them set up to, to best fit into the homesteading space that I feel they, they fit into. And the first one I'm going to talk about right here is a CZ P07 handgun. This is a semi-automatic 9mm handgun. It's considered a compact frame. This will hold about 15 rounds of ammunition in it. Uh, it's semi-automatic, meaning it fires once for each pull of the trigger. Uh, we will show... It's unloaded there. This firearm right here is set up as my go-to homestead gun. Nine times out of 10, if something comes up where I need a firearm, this is the one I grab. And I know that sounds a little crazy um, that it's a handgun, but I have trained with this. I've shot it enough where I know how to, to shoot it well. Um, it has maybe what I'd call training wheels on it for Jackie to also wield. And that would be in the form of this Olight Balder S that you see right up here. Any firearm on your homestead, if you are going to use it kind of as a do-all or a multi-purpose, um, I would encourage you to run a light and laser on it, at the very least a light. And the reason for that, that light is going to give you the ability to identify your target. Obviously with firearms and safety, the biggest thing is that you need to know what you're shooting at and know what's beyond it. And a light like this gives you that ability. You know, it's lighting up even in the daylight here. It's giving you the ability to see your target and to know what you're shooting and to see what beyond it. This light is very bright. So at night it's casting, you know, almost a hundred yards beyond what you're aiming at. So huge, huge, huge there to any firearm you're gonna have on the homestead that's gonna be uh, predator control, uh, you know, something goes bump in the night on the farm and you've got to go check it out. Uh, have a strong light on your firearm. Now, the training wheels I mentioned on this are that laser that also comes on board with this. A lot of times in the past, you had to choose, you either ran a light or a laser. A light made your gun great at night, but unless you trained with the sights on that firearm and you knew how to line them up and shoot effectively, um, your, your targeting wasn't necessarily as accurate as, as you might have wanted. By installing a laser on your firearm along with the light, uh, you, this thing is as easy as picking it up, turning it on, 
and pointing, putting the laser, the green dot, on what you want to shoot. So if Jackie walks out back at night and there's a possum 25 yards across the backyard trying to get into the chicken coop, Jackie's able to pick this up, put the green dot on the possum, pull the trigger, and neutralize that threat. If you grew up around firearms and you're comfortable with firearms and you shoot a lot, you know, lining up your sights on a possum at 25 yards is totally doable. You know, for somebody that's not necessarily a gun person, you're not out all the time shooting your firearms, uh, that gives you the ability to effectively and safely use your firearm. You're not blindly shooting into the night. So, so if you're gonna run a handgun on your homestead and you're gonna choose that, I definitely recommend mounting a light and laser on it. This Olight Balder S with the light and laser, I believe it runs about $120. Uh, they have a blue laser version, which is a little bit cooler, I guess you could say. Uh, that's a little bit more. But for $120 on top of the cost of your firearm, it's totally worth it to have both peace of mind, you're gonna hit what you're aiming at with that laser, but also the light to know exactly what you're aiming at. Um, you know, what you're, what's in the, in the line of fire of your muzzle and what's behind it. Being in nine millimeter, I have used this uh, for like I said, possum control, varmint control. I have put down pigs with this as well. Um, this is my go-to if I've got to slaughter a pig. Um, this is the one I reach for. I'm a nine millimeter person when it comes to slaughtering pigs. So pistols fit into varmint control. Uh, pistols fit into dispatching an animal if you need to. And they fit into that home defense side of things uh, where they don't really fit into the whole homesteading thing is in the procurement of food. That's where your long arms, your rifles and shotguns really kind of start to shine. This right here is a Marlin 336. Uh, it's from 1962. It is chambered in 3030, which is arguably one of the most popular deer hunting rounds in the world. Uh, it sits underneath a Vortex 4 to 12 optic. Uh, this is my go-to deer hunting rifle. This is what I turn to when I'm out back hunting. I use it for bear hunting as well. Uh, your rifles really begin to shine in that space of being able to reach out further and, and really gain range. Varmint control on this, 100% yes. Hunting with this, 100% yes. Where this tends to be a little bit overboard is on the side of humane dispatch. If you do need to uh, dispatch an animal from across a field, this will work for that. But uh, up close and personal, it's a little bit overkill. So hunting rifle right here but really this is more set up for hunting than anything else if i had to pick one rifle for kind of everything to do on the homestead rifle related it would be an ar-15 and this is where i feel like maybe i'm gonna ruffle some feathers but hear me out and let me make a case for this thing they look a lot like they're they're brethren of war i guess you could say but modern manufacturing techniques and ammunition manufacturers have given us the ability now to chamber these in different rounds, which make them much more effective for hunting. You know, the 5.56 round that comes, you know, on your standard AR-15, not something that I would consider using for deer simply because it, it's not a powerful enough round. That 30-30 I showed you, the Marlin, is more powerful than this 5.56. I would say 5.56 is almost borderline unethical round for hunting deer because you're not, um, you're not dispatching the animal quick enough. But in moving to some of these more modern rounds, like 300 Blackout, 65 Grendel, uh, even 762 by 39, which is not a new round, but is relatively new in the AR side of things, you know, these these rifles have really uh, really kind of stepped into the 21st century and and become, you know, your 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 go-to do everything rifle on a farm. They don't have that traditional wooden stock look, but they're performing just as well as any of any of your granddad's rifles that you've seen in the past. Uh, set up on this, I have a set of iron sights on it that I can use to sight traditionally. I do have a red dot sight on here as well. That is a little bit quicker to aim with, a little bit more accurate at longer distances. Again, for nighttime predator control with this, I do have an Olight PL Pro Valkyrie on the front. This was not sent by uh, Oak Light. This is actually my own personal light that I've used. And again, super bright light. Uh, this thing, 200 yards is no problem for this light at all. I can activate it with this pressure pad right here, or I can reach over. I can still activate it with the switches on the light themselves. One thing I like about a lot of these Olight lights, 
uh, including the Balder S that I had on the handgun and then this PL Pro Valkyrie. They come with a USB cord with this on the end and to charge it, all you have to do is plug one end of this cord into a USB brick and then the other side, you magnetically put it right on the light there and it onboard charges. You don't have to take it off. You don't have to switch batteries or anything like that. You know, one of the big things with firearms, especially on the homestead is you want them to work when you need them. And uh, for me, you know, I'm, I'm terrible at keeping things in the house, things that I need. So if I don't have to worry about keeping a stash of batteries somewhere uh, and I can just keep these things topped off, you know, once a month I throw them on the charger and, and that keeps them right there. Um, that works for me, I'm psyched on that. Price on this PL Pro from Olay, I believe is $129.99. So again, not crazy money. Um, great light, super bright. Um, I really love this thing. The third category is shotguns. And if you're going to have only one firearm on your homestead, if you were gonna pick one gun to have and own, um, a shotgun would be it, in my personal opinion. And if you only have one shotgun, that shotgun to me would be a pump action shotgun. This right here is a Mossberg Maverick 88. I've got this one customized for turkey hunting with fiber optic sights on it. Uh, I put this pistol grip stock on it. It's more comfortable, especially if you're gonna be sitting in the woods turkey hunting, you can actually aim it and fire it one handed if you've got it tucked in against your shoulder. This particular model is in 20 gauge. Where shotguns really differentiate themselves from rifles is that a rifle has one rifle barrel, it fires one projectile at a time. Your shotgun is going to fire, well, it can fire one projectile at a time. Those are called slugs. You could run 20 gauge slugs through this if you were deer hunting with it, or if you needed to dispatch an animal. Uh, you could run buckshot through it. You could run bird shot through it. You can run duck hunting rounds through this. Really just super across the board an extremely versatile firearm. And with this set of sights, it is a turkey hunting shotgun. It's a deer hunting shotgun. It is small enough in this configuration that it's a self-defense shotgun. You can throw a slug in this shotgun and use it to dispatch larger livestock like pigs and cattle. Uh, I don't know if I would use something like this for sheep or goats, but, um, but I mean, honestly, if you really had to, it would get the job done in that regard. It might just be a little bit messier than you, you'd want. And the other thing too, if you go with a shotgun like a Mossberg uh, 500 or a Maverick 88 like this, which they're basically the same guns, uh, Remington makes an 870. There are plenty of accessories out there for these firearms to turn them into whatever you need them to be. If you wanted to use it as a home defense weapon, again, I talked about the lights that I run on both my pistol and my rifle for home defense. Uh, you could get a mount for this, no problem, and mount a weapons light to this as well. As far as a do-all firearm, there really is nothing that, that stacks up to a shotgun. So as I mentioned, this is a Maverick 88 made by Mossberg. Uh, I have it set up for turkey hunting, which is why you see the camo on it and kind of the pistol grip and the fiber optic sights. That Maverick 88, I think it went for like 250 bucks when it was brand new. There's plenty of options out there there. If you're even more hard up for cash, uh, this is a Stevens 107B in 16 gauge. Uh, this is from around 1940. I found this super cheap locally, $75. And while I wouldn't say this is anything super special, it's not necessarily collectible. I mean, it's old. This is an excellent option for not a lot of money. Uh, they do still make this same design new. I believe it's under the New England Firearms Company. And uh, they make modern day equivalents, single shot shotguns from 410 all the way up to 12 gauge. They may even make a 10 gauge version, I think. Now, something to note here, what I have shown you, some of these are not necessarily legal in every state. Uh, there are many states that only allow the use of 10 rounds maximum in a handgun. There are many states that have outright banned AR-15s. Uh, there are states that have banned semi-automatic rifles and shotguns, such as that Browning way up at the top there and even this 1022 in the middle here because it is a semi-automatic rifle. So if you're looking at purchasing a firearm for your homestead, pay attention to your local laws, go to your local gun shop, talk to the person who owns it or works there and say, you know, this is what I'm looking for. This is the things I want. They will more than gladly let you handle firearms, let you look at them. Uh, some may even have a range where you can test fire firearms. They might have demo versions. 
All of these are tools, but they're investments. And if you're going to be investing your hard earned money in them, you should be getting something that you're going to be comfortable with. Not only because you're going to own it for a long time and you're spending a lot of money on it, but because it's a tool that you're going to use. And if you're not comfortable using it, it can actually be unsafe. So I'd advise you if you're not familiar with firearms and you're thinking about getting something for your small farm or homestead, find somebody that you might consider a gun guy or a gun girl locally who has multiple firearms, who's shot them before, who's comfortable around them. That can kind of take you under the wing and act as a mentor for you. Otherwise, what I see a lot of the time can happen where somebody will buy a firearm, but they're not quite comfortable using it. And the, so they never practice with it. And then the time comes where they need it and they have no clue what to do. Thanks again to Olight for sponsoring this video. They did provide us with a discount code. So if you head down below to the description, you'll see a link that you can click. And if you use the code TMH10, that'll get you 10% off everything on their website, whether it's a weapons mounted light or a flashlight that you can use for your everyday carry. If you guys have any opinions on the picks that I made, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. These are kind of my choices for top homesteading guns, but I know everybody thinks a little bit differently on these sorts of things. And if you have other ideas, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, make sure to hit that subscription button down below if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to see more about what we're doing. As always, we thank you for watching and hope you're having a great day. Bye.